the most difficult thing about the patient relationship in terms of cancer is that you develop this bond with them. You have this trust. At the end of the day, they're putting their whole lives in your hands. And you trust them to keep going and to not give up. And that's a bond that is unlike any other bond. It's more than a friendship. It's this companionship through this journey, right? And when their cancer comes back, you feel in some ways like you failed them. Even though you know you didn't, like it wasn't your fault. You did the best you could with the tools that exist, but you still feel like you failed them. And that's what drove me to research, actually. If I had to go into a middle school biology class and explain to them what cancer is, I would tell them that it is bad luck. Cancer is your own body, your own cells, that just lost the stop signal. You get a little cut. Your cells have to grow and divide to bridge the gap and actually close that gap. Eventually they stop, right? The two sides meet each other and they stop dividing. Those cells that were growing and healing that wound they stop. There's a stop signal. And every single cell has it. And if there is a random genetic mutation, a random event that makes that cell lose the stop signal, it becomes cancer. Fortunately, there's lots of checks and balances in your body. And so if you lose one stop signal, uh, it doesn't immediately become cancer. You have to lose a whole collection of stop signals for it to become cancer. But once it reaches that threshold, it just doesn't stop dividing. And that's the problem with cancer. And so how do, you, how do you kill that? How do you kill that cancer without killing your cells? One of the ways that we're dealing with that is altering radiation. When you have head and neck cancers, many are treated with surgery. They still have to recover for four to six weeks, and then they have six weeks of radiation. In conjunction with the radiation oncologists here, we've come up with a way that we feel is safe to now condense that dose into two weeks. It's not the standard of care. Uh, the truth is, it's experimental. But you know, we think it's a great experiment. We think it's a safe experiment. And many patients really understand that. When I introduce a clinical trial, I, I can't tell you how many patients have said, well, is this gonna help someone else? But yeah, <laughs> probably will help someone else because we're gonna learn from this and we're gonna make the treatment better. And this is sign me up. We can be successful with this. It'll, it'll change the face of treatment. And, and that's honestly, that's one of the most amazing parts of the job. If I was going to explain cancer research funding to my seven-year-old, I would say, plan on failing every single time, then you'll never be disappointed. And that's okay, because that's just part of the process, that's part of the learning, and you're gonna do it again. And you know what's gonna happen? You're not gonna get it. And you can do it again, and you're not gonna get it. And then you can do it again, you're gonna get it. You gotta keep going. That's the only way to, to succeed. Success means making the science better and making patient care better.